there's two things that you um, probably want to do to make sure you're you're not having any problems. Actually, maybe three. Um, you know, the first is you know your email service provider, or if you're using Mailchimp or Aweber or Drip or anybody like that, Infusionsoft. You know, they're going to have you know send statistics for each mail you do, so they'll show you you know the, the number of opens, the number of clicks, um, just the basic engagement metrics, and you always want to compare. You know your most recent email to the previous two, three, or four emails. So if you know I've been getting open rates of you know fifteen, twenty percent, and the next email gets like a five percent open rate, you know there, there's probably probably something happened there that you need to look into. So um, I always like to keep a, a pretty close track on each each email blast, like individual performance statistics. And if there's there's a dip, you know then I know that something might have happened. Um, but there are actually some some better tools that you can um, use that will help you identify specific issues. Um, there is a piece of software called Mail Monitor. I think it's actually a SaaS application. But what they do is they give you a bunch of seed emails, and you would just add those to your mailing list. So they'll have an email address at like Hotmail and Gmail and Yahoo and Cox and Comcast and basically all, all of the big email service providers. Um, so they'll have you send, as part of your email blast, a message to all of their um, seed emails and then if one of your messages shows up in the spam folder or doesn't show up at all, um, they'll be able to track that and show you for each blast, like, okay, Hotmail put it in the spam folder, Gmail put it in the inbox, Yahoo didn't deliver it at all, and you'll be able to track those things, and that is just incredibly useful if you're sending out you know, a large volume of mail. And, and the price is that is you know, not, not crazy. So if you're sending out a lot of email, it's, it's definitely worth taking a look at. All right. No, I think that's – yeah. Was, was there something else that – uh, yeah, um, then I guess the third thing is probably to regularly check you know, some of the blacklists. Um, there's a tool called Multi-RBL. Um, you can Google it, it'll come up. Um, but that will check your sending IP address and your domain name against a couple hundred different blacklists. It's got all of the big ones, so if you're, you know, somebody's blacklisted your IP address or your domain name, um, you'll be able to figure that out right away and get that taken care of. All right, brilliant. So, so with all these, you know, email service providers, uh, how, how are they deciding whether my messages should be getting into, you know, people who have opted into my list, my subscribers, into their inboxes? How, how do these service providers make that decision? Yeah, so each one is a little bit different, and it has changed over time. Um, email service providers are, have really recognized that people – are just getting way too much email and that they don't want all the email that we received. Um, so, you know, 15, 20 years ago, um, as long as we weren't pushing Viagra or anything like that, you know, the assumption was that your message would make it to the inbox. And, you know, that's that's no longer the case. Um, you can't just assume that, you know, any big email service provider is going to treat your messages like, um, you know, good email, like a personal one-on-one -on -one email. And just assume that's going to make it in the inbox. You know, kind of the rules of the game have changed. Um, email service providers are being more selective about what gets into the inbox and what gets put into the spam folder or if your Gmail into that promotions tab. Um, so you really have to kind of identify, you know, what are these ESPs looking for, and then how can I make sure that my messages meet that criteria. Uh, 